Welcome to episode two of our mini series about Hip Hop History Month. If you missed our last episode, make sure to check it out on our YouTube page or click on the link below to learn about hip hop's early development in cities across New York. As we continue celebrating Hip Hop History Month this November, in this episode, we'll be covering the golden era of hip hop, which started in the 1980s until the mid 90s. Let's get into it. Where we left off in our last episode, the elements of hip hop were beginning to spread across the US and internationally by 1980. By the beginning of the golden age, hip hop begins to bubble around the west coast in 1983 and rap battles were starting to become a more popular occurrence within the community. In 1984, artists such as Run DMC, The Fat Boys, Houdini, and many others headlined hip hop's first nationwide tour, Fresh Fest. The tour had 27 dates all around the US and brought in a total of $3.5 million, in which 5% was donated to the United Negro College Fund. It was after this tour that artists realized how lucrative touring can be. The following year, in 1985, female rap duo Salt and Peppa hit the scene as one of the first female rap groups, and it was around this time that the golden era really began to kick off. People want to know why we have labeled those particular years, 1986 to 1990, as the golden era is because that was the most impactful time in the history of hip hop. Not only was the music so diverse because you had groups like Run DMC, LL Cool J, Big Daddy Kane, Vince Markey, Queen Latifah, Salt and Pepper, on and on. I mean, every group that came out had its own unique persona. No one wanted to be like each other. They wanted to be different. In, in conjunction with the diversity of the music, you also had some of the biggest changes in hip hop. MTV, prior to 1986, MTV didn't play any rap music videos. They didn't even want to play black music videos. Michael Jackson had a hard time getting his videos played on MTV, and he was the king of pop. So when they added Yo! MTV in 1986, it helped to elevate the awareness of rap music around the world. So now kids in Europe and Africa, South America, all got exposed. They had heard it, but they had not seen it. And now with MTV, they were able to see it for the first time. The golden era was a time of innovation and discovery. Hip hop had become mainstream, but it was also during a time where musically anything goes. It was an experimental time in many elements, such as lyricism and wordplay, political touch points and black activism, while in other areas, gangster rap and party music was also the norm. There was all these things that were happening in which we were validating each other by our successes. So an important part was self-destruction. That was a project that came about because there was a lot of negativity being directed at hip hop. And it was the artists that were basically saying, no, that's not us. They were from different record labels. They were signed to different contracts and they were all saying, you know what, we don't care. We're gonna make this one record together. They made it happen. So to see that that had the lasting effect that it had where it was able to unite people, make a statement to say, no, we're not, you know, we're not Green Brothers. We're doing something positive for ourselves, the community and whatever. That was something I think was really positive. By now we've gone over the development of hip hop as well as the golden era. Tune into next week's episode as we touch on the final point about hip hop and how the last few decades have changed the music scene forever. We'll see you guys next week.